some point that there is vestibular nerve. It's not the case here. Uh, this is too close. All right. Professor Manian, we'll keep watching you. Uh, we are now ready for the next case. Mukund, again, one plus two, please. Yeah, ma'am. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sir. Uh, yes, Dr. K. Kerr. About the case. Sir. Who is going to operate next case? Uh, yes, sir. We are presenting, sir. We have a 14-year-old female presenting with left profuse mucoid ear discharge of 3 years duration and progressive reduced hearing on the left side of 2 years duration. On examination, there was a large central perforation on the left side with tympanum sclerotic patch. Her audiogram showed a left-sided moderate to severe conductive hearing loss with a pure tone average of 58.3 decibels. Her high resolution CT scan showed a left mastoid and middle ear showing few strands which were suggestive of resolving infection. Otherwise, the rest of the middle ear anatomy on the left side was found to be normal. She was diagnosed with left chronic otitis media, mucosal inactive, with moderately severe conductive hearing loss. Our plan is for a left tympanoplasty. Thank you. Professor Attenberg? Professor Attenberg? Yes. We are on to the auditorium, sir. Yes, sir. You know the patient, the little girl has a perforation. Could I have a um, retractor? No, a retractor. What's it called? Speculum. Yes, speculum. Sir, I'm Dr. Samandam. So just I wanted to know what is your plan now. Yes, speculum. Yes, speculum. To look into the ear. Sir, Dr. Samandam is your moderator from the other end. Professor, yes. Yeah. yeah. You have Dr. Samandam at the other end, sir. Sir, fine. That, that, good afternoon, sir. Could sir. he give me a new speculum? I will have a new speculum, perhaps, to look into the ear. At the yes. beginning of surgery, you could always verify again that what you see is what you expect. That means here we expect a perforation of the posterior quadrants, yes. superior inferior, together with a bad hearing. That means it could be could be a, a just simple perforation, or also it could be a defect of the ossicular chain. We don't know yet. Anand. Yes, Dr. Sampadam. Uh, the, the, the question to Dr. Ramanian, how will you attribute the vessel as the only cause of trigeminal neuralgia? Professor Manian, Sorry? question to you. Sir, yes. how, sir Manian, sir, yes. there is a question. How yes. will you attribute the vessel as the only cause of trigeminal neuralgia? Uh, because it's a, by regarding the result of the fascial, of the trigeminal decompression, in the trigeminal decompression is mainly the superior cerebellar artery. In the case that we have to do, it will be the case. Yes. And I suspect, in addition, vein, uh, anormal trigeminal vein. Mm. So is, uh, in 25% is a vein, and in 65% is a scar. And if it is both, we can coagulate the vein, and we have to perform a decompression of the vascular root. Thank you, sir. Uh, and then we can go to Dr. Wittenbrick. Yes, sir. We are back there. Can we start? Yes, sir. Have we some light, please? Light, top light. Give me a scalpel, please. Top light, top light. Scalpel. Want to put off? You have a scalpel? No, on, on, on. Scalpel. And some ointment, some uh, cloth. Some cloth. Dry your bed, sir. Like this. Thank you. 
So where do we do the incision? You know, with the, all the uh, local anesthesia I put in, you don't see the reticular fold anymore. It is gone. So if, you, if I cut in here, yeah. I would go into the fold which is bad. It is not good. It is always, you need always to cut behind the fold. And this is why I have the marking, which is the incision that is the uh, puncture for my yes. local anesthesia. It's there where I have to do my incision line. Close. That means we go like this. And then anteriorly. And then we make a little marking here. That is to find at the end of the surgery the correct position where you should cut. So, now we go in and you see there should be not much bleeding because we made a good local anesthesia yes. with adrenaline. This is the temporalis muscle going through. And then with the blunt side we go down just scratching on top of the muscle to come near to the entrance of the ear canal there which is there and to hold it please hold it and now I take bipolar the bipolar is here there's music I hear so there shouldn't be much bleeding just want to test now if it works yes here's always a little artery coming up here so now we feel this is the entrance of the external ear canal there yes. so now we get the scalpel again scalpel and we can cut in at the floor at the lower border of the, te of the temporalis muscle. We go anteriorly as far as possible and then we cut through the muscle, not in the muscle because the muscle is always bleeding, bleeding. but we go through at the external ear canal entrance like this. And then we make a little very short incision backwards just to better place the retractor there. Take this. And now we have the um, bone uh, respiratorium. You have a respiratorium? Only this one or this one? This is also a respiratorium? You think so? It does not look yes. like a respiratorium. Well, I try. So now we go in here. And here's the entrance to the ear canal. And here you can see the muscle, the floor. And then we retract it a little bit up because we want to place our retractor under the muscle there. Then we go anteriorly, there, anteriorly. This is, and now the scalpel again. And now with a view, where is the entrance of the ear canal and my muscle, I again can go in and continue my incision, but far enough away from the muscle, so that there is no muscle bleeding. But now we have wood opening there. You can see from... Posteriorly? No. Can you see that? No. You see, but it's dry. That means we have not, we did not cut into the muscle. Hold this and a forceps, please. So now, now we have already lifted up more or less the skin of the external ear canal. And now we can cut in 45 degree angle into the skin of the posterior canal wall like this and here again like this and now retractor well, could we can this stay with two only only, you only, only two big, you do, don't have small retractor no only this big one okay 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 if you don't have we have to work with it Okay. No, it's okay. It's very narrow. It's not good. I have to play around a little bit because this is a very... Uh, no, oh, close. Open. Open on both sides. No, 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 no. Close. Let it. 
don't need. I want to have one with this. This on both sides. Do you have that? Can you hold this? Can you hold this? So we have to improvise a little bit. Improvisation like this. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, this is better. So take this. Here into it and here into it. And the second one? Bigger one or smaller one? If you have a small one, it will be better. If you have no small one, I take a small bigger one. Uh, one no, uh, okay, give me that. It's better than nothing. Okay. So what I wanted to stress is to show, this can be seen, that the retractor only goes into the muscle. It's never in the skin. The skin must not be retracted directly because otherwise you will have iske, local ischemia. If you have two, three hours surgical time, you will have necrosis of the skin. And if you do the suturing afterwards, you're wondering why the suture is not holding, why there is infection and so on. So always, this is why lifting up the perichondrium, periosteum here a little bit, only a little bit is enough for putting the retractor be underneath here, you see, underneath the periosteum. So, and now we have good opening, and now we switch over to the microscope, because the rest will be done with the microscope. Sir, Sorry? Uh, regarding the pushing okay. the skin flap. And the li light out of the light? Sir. Okay. So. What do we see? We see a large perforation. It is not only the posterior, but also the complete inferior part. So we will do what we have seen today in the bipolar. We have what we have seen today in the um, in the temporal bone preparation. We will have to do a pull through technique to fix to stabilize stabilize the material, the, to stabilize the, the um, reconstructive, the membrane, the perichondrium, periosteum, and perichondrium and cartilage underneath. Okay, thank you. So one number smaller, one smaller the suction please. And now I would like to have the angled knife, angled round knife. Because now we were going to produce a flap, the skin flap. Or you can give me the scalpel in the beginning, give me a scalpel, it's easier perhaps. Scalpel again. I said I don't incise, I don't want to incision, but here I do an incision, only here. So it's on the it's bone. Not centralized. It's not centralized. And, yes, uh, and take it. Uh, need uh, further magnification. And then uh, it starts in surgeon's view. Where is the? This is the so camera. No, rotate it on to the right. Could side. you? Where do I increase the magnification of the camera? No, no. This is magnification for view. Uh, I want the magnification. Is, of is the he camera. inside? Is the industry the person is inside? The camera is fixed. There is no magnification. You only can increase the camera. Oh. Like this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there is no surgeon's view. Surgeon's view. So uh, angled knife. Angled knife. Angled knife. Camera is uh, rotated now more on to the right side, sir. Pardon? What? Camera rotated to more onto the right side. It's not surgeon's view. Uh, could you just see the television, sir? They feel that it's rotated a little to the right hand side. The camera. The camera? Image. So the this image is posterior. Seems to be rotated no, this is posterior. This is superior. Okay, okay, sir. This is superior. Okay. So it is a, a defect. You see a kidney shaped defect of yes, the tympan. But we'll look into it in a second. So now we try to lift up the tympanomiatal flap and here is the skin which is adhering quite strongly to the bone. In this region it is always the same 
and we lift it up here. Like I said today, lifting it up in a way that as if we want to take away a little bit the first layer of bone too. Like this. And now we can go deeper. Pardon? This is the canal skin wall. No injection. What no injection? What does it mean inject? What do you mean with injection? Some people inject before elevating the flap. No, no. Why? Oh, but you can do that just simply like this. You see, if you if you adhere to the bone, if you do the lifting off as if you want to take away a piece of the first layer of bone. Oh, I lose the the suction is not very well. It's not stably fixed there. So now again we go down. Could I have a scissor please? And here you see it is very thin the skin, very fragile. It consists scissor please. Could I have a scissor please? A scissor. I try to cut this with this angled knife. A scissor. Oh, don't you have a smaller scissor now? Okay, angled knife. Give me the angled knife. Angled knife. The angled knife, please. The angled, the angled instrument. Thank you. And here we lift up. Always the bone here. And now we go until the roof of the external ear canal. Can you see that? That is the roof of the external ear canal. Yeah. So please focus the image. The roof, but very thin skin, fragile skin, nearly yes. no skin. That is just one layer of epithelium. Yes. So that is dangerous because already the suction can kill the skin. So I suck without an with open suction fingertip because otherwise <laughs> the skin will be ruptured directly. So here is a sort of a retraction. There it goes up. What's that? Here is a retraction. So here is anterior to Sorry. the malleus. Wait, Sir, uh, let us see. Hello. And here you have a deep retraction. We could not see it because we did not examine the ear with an endoscope. You see a deep retraction there. Sir. There. Please deep say, retraction please. pocket. And uh, we need a further uh, a little magnification, sir. You are doing under the uh, lower magnification. Higher magnification. Yeah. But then I cannot do surgery. This is too much. This is too much. Please focus, fine focusing, sir. Smaller suction, please. Why? Well, I have to adjust the suction. No, I take a thinner suction because it's so fragile. I have a burr, I need a diamond burr, four millimeter in the beginning, diamond burr. So here, so here we said anterior, this is the anterior rim yes, sir. of this deep retraction. Yes, sir. That is not sharp, not sharp. Do you use sharp. any cotton balls or gel foam? No, 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 I see where I'm working. Cotton balls will, will not help me. Any gel foam? While no. What for? I have, I have my cleavage placed here. here. Sir. That is, I have lifted the skin off the bone. Yes, sir. Here is a deep retraction pocket yes, sir. and an erosion yes. of the lateral attic wall. That means epitumpanic cholesteatoma. Yes, sir. This for the diagnostic, pre-operative diagnostic, which was not sufficient I, because I didn't look with an endoscope. I, I thought looking with a microscope was enough, but it was not enough. 
So this is the perforation here. And I thought it's just a tuber, a mesotympanic perforation. It is. It has two diseases. Yes, Epitympanic sir. retraction plus uh, plus uh, epi uh, plus uh, central perforation. So now we want to lift up more of the skin to be sure that we do not destroy the skin of the external organ. I want to make a, at least a little bit a, a flap. Sir. And we have to turn the head of the child like this. So please centralize the picture, sir. Pam, what? Please centralize the picture. Center? Centralize. This is not yes, center. Aha. Uh -huh. Like this? No, no. It has gone down. Yeah. It's enough. Uh, yeah, fine. So again, here we are at the posterior wall. There's already the corda tympani. Yes, sir. That means the annulus here, which I expect here, is gone. So in reality, we have a deep retraction pocket which, which destroyed already the bone here. There's the corda tympani yes. in this retraction pocket, suctioning with open fingertip. I want to go to the come to the place where I run into normal, healthy tympanic membrane again. That means we have found the upper limit, the upper border, and now we have to go to the lower border. Yes, sir. Where is that? Somewhere here. First of all, lifting up the skin of the external ear canal wall. Here's the defect already. You see that? Yes. This is not, this is here's retraction going inside. And then, very fragile skin. You see there's directly a little perforation occurring there. Doesn't matter because anyhow we have to rebuild it afterwards with the cartilage. And now you, under, now you see, I just was thinking in the beginning, should I already take the cartilage for the reconstruction in the beginning? And yes. now I, you see why that would not have been very wise. So, so now this is difficult because we have this deep retraction here. I'm not sure if I will leave it like this. So there should come now the annulus, the inferior annulus. But now you see I need much more cartilage than just for closing this little perforation. It is yeah. big cartilage needed also for reconstruction of the posterior tympanic, epitympanic wall. Yeah. So here it goes into the, the corridor, deep retraction there, and skin here, and skin, and now, now we should approach the, f the, the region where we come near to the annulus and again. Yes, sir. There. This is the annulus region. Yes, sir. The lower annulus there. And now we have centered on the defect, going inside out again, like this morning. And there is the annulus. Yes, sir. And the mucosa, the floor, the hypotympanon. Sir. There is the hypotympanon. But I think we make, will make it easier here. This is, is no, does not help me. Give me a, ple a little scissor, please, because anyhow we have to reconstruct it. Scissor, but uh, tympano scissor. Tympano scissor. Yes. So this was the annulus there, you see? Tympano scissor, yes. So we cut here because we don't need this here for the flap. This tympano scissor does not cut. It is not working. You see? What happens is that it ruptures. It's not good. You can take this away. I don't need this anymore. So again, angled knife. The angled knife like before. So at the moment, we have to face the problem of this retraction of this defect, which made me suspicious already was that the long incus process is eroded, which is not typical for a pure mesotympanic defect. Yes, sir. And what we have here is now the um, perforation. What you learned in school was if you want to reconstruct the perforation, you have to cut out the rim. I do not do this. I don't want to make it larger. 
And the only reason for cutting out is to get rid of the squamous epithelium, which could run into the inner part. But here you see it's pure mucosa. So I just scratch from the undersurface to make a raw undersurface. I don't cut out any precious skin and precious tympanic membrane remnant. Yes, sir. I just get stretched in from inside out. So I have a good attachment of the fascia of the peritoneum or the cartilage on the undersurface. And especially I'm sure there is no growing of epithelium into the middle ear cavity. And the same down here. And then we can, then we have done this. Well, the next step is again, when we want to reconstruct in the end this perforation, we have to lift up the annulus until here, because here is a bony rim there that is not pleasant, but we have to go in here. So here, due to this fragile skin, I do what I normally I don't do, I cut through, because we have to lift up this skin upwards. Yes, sir. And going, you see how thin it is, and lifting the annulus up. Because the prosthesis, the material, the perichondrium or the cartilage must go, must rest on the bony floor here, even below, anteriorly, until we reach the anterior, anterior rim of the perforation. Sir. And this I can do already now, this can be done now already, earlier, in the beginning, because anyhow we need this to have this opening here, like this. Here I'm on the bone. Yes. This is the bone, bony floor. There is the floor of the external ear canal yes. where we will place, where the cartilage will be placed at the end. Yes, this is the annulus lifted up yes, anteriorly until I reach the anterior part of the perforation. There's the perforation, and yes. I've lifted it up until here. So if I place a material there, it will be, with even some overlap, cover the complete perforation there. There's always some bleeding here. Well, perhaps we will enlarge it here a little bit in the end of the surgery with the, cut, with the diamond burr. This, is, this was the simple thing, just looking at the perforation, Sorry, which we thought would be. Anterior superiorly, there is a sclerotic so, uh, block is there, sir. I don't understand. Was this for me? Anterior superiorly. I don't understand. Is there any tympanosclerotic patch in the no, anterior superior this is region? No, normal. That's what they want, some, eh? some hyalinization, some tympanosclerotic, but it is not, not, so, not so serious. This you always find in these chronic ears. It is not real tympanosclerosis in this way that you, it is a, a completely fixing of the ossicles and all this tympanosclerotic disease. It's so not a tympanosclerotic disease. Okay, there is no tympanosclerotic patch. So here is some, the corda coming out and you see the deep retraction. Never saw this. This is yes, funny, sir, funny it. retraction here. Yes, that sir. the external ear canal has been bulging, has been bulged out so very much and this is still the retraction. So, what we do now is with the burr, I have to take away this bone here and here to yes, have sir. a better view into it. Burr, please. I will make a little bit less magnification for this purpose because, attention, I don't want to, I have to view, I have a, want to have a good view of the surroundings. Yes, this sir. is the burr, so water, water, and perhaps the suction one number larger, the burr in suction one number larger. And then, again, what I told you, I can open up the, the, uh, the retractures now because of the, of the tissue relaxation there. Cutting, cutting. Pardon? Cutting. You are from cutting if you want, yeah. Hello. Hmm? Sir. Yes. Would, would you open the mastoid in this case, sir? What? Open what? Mastoid. No. Okay. Why? Why? I have a problem there, but not in the mastoid. Okay. At the moment, I don't see. What, what, what do I expect from the mastoid? At the mastoid, if I have healthy mucosa, then it's fine. If I now have not healthy mucosa, that is not dist it's disturbing because yes, the, it does not turn, the, the burr is not working. 
the bird this does not turn. So, and if the if there's uh, the mucosa is inflamed, that is not astonishing because this ear has a big perforation. So, uh, germs and bacteria from outer world could come in to the muco to the mucosa of the mastoid. Yes, sir. And uh, so, but the mastoid is not the clue. No need of my open I will mastoid. tell tomorrow in my lecture. Yes, sir. That we, I think, we should really change our attitude towards cholecystoma. In this way, let us learn from the rhinologists. Yes, in former times, what did we do if they have, because the middle ear is a big sinus, I told this already when we talked about the tubal orifice. And yes, if we imagine what we did in former times to the poor patient with their sinus nasal disease, we operated the sinus, called the uh, frontal sinus from exteriorly. And only now we have adopted in endoscopic sinus surgery the concept of drainage. And we yes. just opened the drainage from the sinus, from the maxillary sinus and ethmoid sinus to the, uh, to the nose, yes. and suddenly everything heals. Since that time, I nearly, I, it's rare that I touch, that I open the frontal sinus. You don't need to, because you just you ensure a good drainage and that's it. So why open the mastoid if the disease is there? Yes. You have to get rid of the disease here, and then yes. the mastoid will heal by itself. I think since many, many years, I didn't do a mastoidectomy just for fun, only for example, in cases where we have a huge cholesteatoma, and yes, now I need uh, a diamond. Yeah. If we have a huge cholesteatoma, and especially for young doctors, young doctors have to train by mastoidectomy here, yes, sir. and they keep the posterior canal, and then either huge cholesteatoma we pull through, or we come from here and take canal wall, but it's no longer the therapy for cholesteatoma. It is yes, um, mounting the horse on the wrong side. The disease is here in the middle ear, cleft near to the tubal orifice, but not at the tu at, but not in the mastoid. Sir. So now we will drill away this posterior canal wall, which Sir. hinders my view into the retraction pocket region, like here. When you drill here, you must always know where is the short process of the malleus here. Where is it? Where is it? There. To be sure that you do not touch it. Sir. So now this is the defect. Now it can be easily seen how large the defect is, nearly half of the posterior wall. That so means in former times, when I was young, I asked my teachers, when do I have to switch over to radical cavity? Because large defects of the posterior wall could not be reconstructed just by temporalis fascia. And they said, oh, if half of the posterior wall is destroyed by the cholesteatoma, you have to perform a radical cavity. Yes, sir. But this is the old technique, the old thing, thinking, because at that period we did not have cartilage. Yes. And nowadays with cartilage you can reconstruct a complete posterior wall. So radical cavity is really left over for desperate cases where you have a huge cholesterol going into every cell. This diamond is not very sharp. Can that be? If you have a new one. And the angled knife, please, again. I will now again check how far I am. Angled knife, please, again. Angled knife. Angled knife, please. And an, another diamond burr, perhaps, is if you have a sharp one. If not, we drill, we take more time for drilling. So, there is the short process I wanted to see, there. Yes, sir. Always have to know where it is. This is the defect. There's the epitympanic defect. Here is the bone. Yes, sir. The suction is too large for this, but we need the suction for drilling. But here you see, this is the retraction. There. Yes, sir. There. Sir. Now we can lift off the retraction. That's good. So we don't need to have much more drilling there. There is no needed. That is good here. Here's mucosa. You see that? Yes, sir. There is mucosa. There is the skin going in. So it's perhaps only a deep retraction pocket. Uh, one suction, one number smaller, because if I suck with this large suction, even with the open yes. fingertip, it will destroy the skin. Smaller one. And what is, why is it so important? Uh, skin has the tendency, epithelium cells are the tendency to regrow. If you place one epithelium cell, if you leave it over inside, it will regrow. And so. this is what is this characteristic we only know from one place, one other material in the body, that there's carcinoma. So for me, for my doctors, for my training, 
we name cholecystoma has to be treated like carcinoma. That means we have to get it away in healthy tissue. We must go cut through in the healthy region around the carcinoma, uh, cholecystoma, to be sure that every little cell is away because one cell left over means residue, residual cholecystoma. And therefore, I want to get out the sac intact, like here. Here I'm behind and not yet here. This is why thin suction and the best remedy, the best precaution or prognosis for no residual is if I am able to lift up an intact sac. And this is why cautiously preparing here. Here is difficult because it's so atrophic, but trying. This is the stapes, tendon, there it goes down. And I think, yes, here we are fine. This is the incus. And now we made it. We have gotten rid of all this retraction. Now a sickle knife, please. So what would you do with this corda? The corda is in the epithelium. So if you say cholestatoma is carcinoma, would you preserve a corda in a carcinoma case? No. So, so what I do is sacrifice this corda. Anyhow, it was in the perforation, in this retraction, in the disease. And it is, by the way, and if I try to lift off the skin from the corda, I would never be sure if every cell is lifted away. So yes, smell is not, uh, the taste is not well, um, so very important yes. because we have six nerves on both sides, two on each side, which transmit the taste of smell. That is the facial nerve, the corda, the lingualis, the, 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 the um, vagus and the glossopharyngeus. So if from these six nerves, one is only destroyed, if it is destroyed, if it hasn't been destroyed yet, most times the brain doesn't even recognize it, only in stapes surgery. But in this case of chronic ear disease, anyhow, it has not continued its function. So here we are, this is, here we are aggressive, that means active against the corda. So again, this is the short process. This is the neck of the malleus. Yes, sir. And here we want to get rid, if that's visible, of all carcinoma to carcinoma cholesteatoma cells. So that means we go from behind, from inside, from in the ear, outside. Never cut through the skin. So there we are, yes. far away. A healthy mucosa behind, below. And so this is, and now we do the anterior tympanotomy. Yes, sir. There will be nothing, because we saw already from the, through the perforation, there's healthy mucosa, healthy mucosa of the middle ear, cleft down there. Yes, sir. And here is the, um, here is the anterior part, and now, of course, there came today this discussion, what do we do with the corda, anyhow. Corda is not working. So I have a good, good, good hole here where I can pull my perichondrium through. So now this is the corda. We only have one other solution. There could be one solution. If I manage to get this corda free here, as I do an underlay with cartilage, it is not so important if there are some cells outside of the cartilage remaining because anyhow there will be so a lot please of cells. Please the picture. Not centered? Uh, please send the picture. Like this? Yes, sir. Uh, and fine focusing. A little fine focusing. Like this? Uh, yes, sir. Very good. Fantastic. Okay, so now again, Corda. You'll see if we can lift it up. If we would, for example, I would place the cartilage below the corda, sure. but uh, I don't like that. No, 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 I don't like this. Because here, you see that the skin is going down there. And if we treat it like cholestat, like carcinoma, is there skin in the hypotympanon? Sure. No? That's good. Give me a scissor. I will not preserve it. It's too dangerous. If I look at the the, the scissor, the tympano scissor, 
the small scissor for tympana. So I will cut it here. Anyhow, there is also scar material here on the corda. Did you see that? You have a new one? Yes, sir. No. No, I need a scissor. It does not cut. You see? You see, it does not cut. I don't know what this is, but this is not a scissor. It is not cutting. Give me an angled knife. An angled... An angled... Not the angled. Give me a knife. Um, um, preparation knife. No, not the angles. No, not the angle. So we cut with the angle. We cut through at the bony where it goes out. And here you see this is this was the problem that behind the corda here, sure. when I could not get rid get good touch to it. Yes, sir. There was the imp I have the impression that there is still some some skin going deeper. So now now we have it. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, so this is for eradication. We have the material here. This is the malleus here. Yes, sir. The large defect. We have to make a large reconstruction there. Yes, sir. And the complete perforation here from behind. Can you see? This is the perforation there. Okay, so now next step will be... Sir. What is with the ossicles? Please give me a um, sickle knife. So now we look at the ossicles. The ossicles so are, not, are not well... Yes, sir. Like this? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, focus. ossicles, the long malleus, inc long ingus process is no good. You see? Yes, sir. There is too much destruction. Too much. Okay. You cannot use it. Yes, sir. You cannot use it anymore. Perhaps I thought in the beginning, perhaps I can make, place an, uh, an angled, angular clip prosthesis, but that is not enough for it. It's really eroded here. Yes, sir. So, we look here, we take off what is never eroded, or nearly never, is the lenticular process here, you see? Yes, I sir. opened the joint, cleft, I took off the incus part of the joint. This is also important because this is often raw, often destroyed, the bone is often destroyed by the cholesteatoma, and only now I'm sure there are no epithelial cells left on top of the stapes in yes, case of a retraction. Yes, and now, what we do, we will place, the reconstruction is easy, a clip prosthesis on top of the stapes, and cartilage reconstruction of the posterior wall together yes, with the anterior tympanic membrane. Yes, so the next step, this was eradication, the next step is, of course, taking out cartilage. Yes. Okay. So, light. I need, I need more light. And the big macroscopic camera, so the picture is very dull and uh, so the some amount of brightness can be there dry? and uh, no. you can still Leave clear uh, clear the field it. and uh, show us sir because it's not very clear at all. Did they keep with me? Was that for me? I didn't understand. So the the two prong retractor the, the yeah sharp the sharp one sharp yeah and the scissor, normal scissor. So now, a normal scissor. This one. So, uh, this is my finger again. Yes, sir. In the carbon conche, there. There yes, we sir. want to take the cartilage. Here we have a lot of cartilage, you see, without any aesthetic problem there. You see? Yes, my sir. finger there, the retractor there, going up here, like this. And then we just go in, we have two possibilities. The first one, the easier one, give me a scalpel. We do it in the correct way. Scalpel, scalpel. I feel with my finger where the carum conche is. And now I can cut in here, cut through the skin, and through the um, 
connected like tissue yes. down until I reach the cartilage here. And now I can take the scissor and expose the cartilage yes, with its perichondrium. We have the problem here that we have no, that there is no cartilage cutter. So we have, improvisation is needed. So there is the cartilage. You see the cartilage? Yes. Nice, white. Give me. Okay, like this, pull. And you can have a, do you have a second one? So, this is the cartilage of the carbon conche. Yes, sir. Okay. The problem now is I have no cartilage cutter. Otherwise, I would just take out a piece of cartilage, cut it and use it. So now we have to do something else. We want to have... We want to have... A loose, 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 loose. We want to have a good piece of perichondrium. And... Wait. Pay attention. Does it pay attention. And the scalpel for me, please. Like this, pull. Very strong. Pull very strong. Scalpel. So, I, first of all, I want to take out a big piece of perichondrium. So I cut into the cartilage through the perichondrium, but not through. And now, angled knife. The angled knife. And then we do it... I have to do it under the microscope, because my eyes are not good enough anymore with a little bit less magnification. Angled knife. My finger is still the angled knife. My finger is still in the perfor in the carbon conchi. And now I can lift up from this incision. I try pull. Pull the retractors. Pull the retractors. Where is my incision? I don't see the incision. Here is the incision. Scalpel again, perhaps. Scalpel again. Where is the incision? I cannot see the incision anymore. Again, again, again. Scalpel. I don't see the incision line. Scalpel. And this is the incision Sir. through the perichondrium. Now, again, angled knife. And we scrap off. If, even if a bit cartilage comes out, doesn't matter, because anyhow we have to have cartilage there. So this is the perichondrium. Is it visible? Yes, sir. We go here until we reach the scalpel. <coughs> it's better to to use to go step by step and not in one big step. And again, again we take out here this perichondrium here and now upper side and which makes it easier if we want to make it easier we just take a piece of cloth piece of cloth take this, take this piece of cloth and you just wrap it down. You see? Yes. It's blunt loosening. Can you see the perichondrium yes, sir. coming yes, off sir. smoothly? Sorry, yes, sir. Like this. <coughs> and again, the, the scalpel perhaps better. Because there it stops the incision. Incision stopped here. And the angled knife the angled knife, and then I need a forceps and a, a scissor. Now here we are, forceps scissor, and now we can take away the, the perichondrium, which is still too thick, yes, but we'll have to make it thinner afterwards. So. 
like this here, cutting it off. And now we have a beautiful piece of perichondrium. You see that? But it's still too thick. We will have to work on it. Please give me yes a plate. No, no, no. Without it, without water. It turned over the other side. And we preserve it in the beginning. We place it here and just let it dry. I will work on it afterwards. But before I have to take some cartilage. So, uh, don't let it fall. Okay, take this and this. And now the scalpel. This I must do again with my naked eye. Lead, stay in, stay inside. No, 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 no. Stay in, stay inside. Now you see? There. And now, well, we have to skeletonize the cartilage, like I showed in the temporal bone today. More light, please. And I need thin cartilage for this young girl. So we have to cut through this cartilage in a thin way. Take it. <laughs> yes, pull here. Sir, if you have a cartilage slicer, I have no cartilage cutter, that is my problem. Okay. If you have, what is the uh, dimension of the cartilage slice you take? The what? The? What is the uh, thickness of the cartilage ah, that slices? Like I can decide with my slicer, with my cartilage cutter. I, I would, for example, for the tympanic membrane, so I would use cartilage of around 200, 300 micrometer. I could give in a lecture, well, but tomorrow, well, I have no time for this. Now you see there is still cartilage on it. Yes, sir. And uh, I, I hope that we will have enough cartilage. Wait, again, pull. That is not so very much, but the rest will be anyhow done by the perichondrium. So, fine, that is all what they have as material. Sir. And now retractors again, and retractors. Go out, 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 retractor. And now we put in the retractor again. Yes. One, and the number two. Yes. Okay. And now we have to work a little bit on the materials. No, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Leave it. Don't let them fall. Leave it. Don't touch. Don't touch because it's dangerous. This is what is not the first time that it is destroyed or that it's fallen down to the floor. So we do it with a microscope because my eyes are not good enough anymore. Sir. I need a, a scissor and a forceps. Forceps and scissor. So first of all, let's look at the perichondrium. No, the forceps with prongs, with the, with the, the surgical, yes, and scissor. And the normal scissor, please. There's, I don't know why, there's a little perforation. Pericardium, yes, sir. Uh, it must have happened somewhere during perforation, but it doesn't matter. Perforation can be closed by another piece of connective tissue. So take away this tissue. So we thin it out. All this other connective tissue, which has nothing to do with the perichondrium, is only disturbing and is hampering and making the material too thick. It doesn't increase the stability but it's not good. So, this is a nice piece. Yes, sir. And I, now I could do with the vein clamp, vein press from Dr. Robert Vincent. So, the, uh, I would like to have an, an, some, some instrument like this. So, how do we press away the water? We can do it like this. We have no vein press. Sir. Like this, you see that? Yes, sir. And then a piece of cloth, anatomical, anatomical uh, forceps. Anatomical forceps, yes, the small, no, this is surgical, the other one. 
where is it? And a piece of cloth. And a piece of cloth. You see a very large, nice. Where yes. is the piece of cloth? Yeah, a dry one. Do you have a new one? No. Wait. So now we dry it out. We press it. I need with my finger. I press it with my fingers. Yes. Like this. And then after several times pressing, it is fine. Anyhow, we have time. We can let it dry it out a little bit more. Yes. We take this out now. And this is, of course, not very beautiful because you see there could be some foreign body material in there. Now pressing again. And as long as it touches to the finger, yeah. that means it is still not dry enough. But we can leave it like this now. Yeah. Now, scalpel, we look if we can use the cartilage like as it is. So this is a piece for the reconstruction of posterior wall. Sure. And these little scraps will also be used for the posterior wall. They are not beautiful. This is not beautiful. It is too thick and not nice. Sure. But, uh, well, that's all we have. So the next step will be the prosthesis. Could you open my sec? What is that? My, my, my prosthesis. I brought this course prosthesis with me. So the first one will come into use. 4.5 clip, Dresden clip. Where is the 4.5 Dresden clip? Look at the, no, no, this not. No, 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 I don't know, it's too fast, I cannot see. For 2.5, or the, yes, this 2.5, this one we'll use. This one, this is the prosthesis we take. 2.5. Clip partial process, I tell you. Partial prosthesis, clip prosthesis type Dresden. Suction. And the first thing we'll do, we'll replace the prosthesis. Yes, sir. And uh, again, stop. And then where is my, stop, my, my sack, my plastic sack. You can open this up already. Where is this plastics? And uh, sorry, I have to uh, put it out. Could you please place it there? Take this away and place it there, everything. Oh, no, otherwise, that I can see what it is. That I can see what it is. No, this is the same. So put this aside, put this aside. Yeah, this you don't need. This put aside, 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 aside. No, 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 put them aside, 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 aside. All the suction tubes I don't need. I don't need the suction tubes. So these are important, put them out. What is, put them out, all, everything. All these things, there, more, there, more, Silence. there, more, because of more. I brought for two surgeries. Sir. Yes. Is there more? No. Gel foam, you have this. You have gel foam and others. No. So, what I need is, this is only, I'm sorry, I only brought one. Take this one here, this one, and open it up. Uh, what what I do now is I want to Please prevent I want to prevent and and this yes this you can open up open up open cautiously cautious yeah do not let fall down cautious 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 okay leave it there don't move don't touch and the other one is please give me this this one here this please focus it this. You can focus give. it, focus it. Silk for this is prefabricated <coughs> okay. silicones. This last one, this is for the external ear canal. Sir. This is for the external ear canal and for covering the tympanic membrane. But this is the important thing. Why? This is a silicone sheeting okay. which we designed which I made a lot of measurements from temporal bones, from uh, radical cavities. And why, what is that for? When we reconstruct the tympanic membrane now, we want to prevent any adhesion between the reconstructed material and the, that means the tymp new tympanic membrane, and the promontory. Why? Needle, preparation needle. If we have a contact there, there will be a, 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 a blockage. There will be scar tissue growing. And there will be a blockage between the undersurface of the reconstruction material, needle, of the sir. reconstruction material. No, this is not a, this is a needle? 
No. There's a hook. Just a needle. Normal needle. If you have. No, no, no. This is not a needle. Fine focusing. Show me a needle. One needle only. No. This is... What is that? This is a micro respiratory or something. That is not a needle. No, Please give me this, this. What you gave me at the beginning. The, this uh, angled hook. Angled hook would be okay then. If I have nothing else. So here is the promontory. This, yes, is the pro this is the malleus from the undersurface. So if we place something between and it adheres to the promontory, give me the angle tool. Then there will be a blockage here, there will be a, a contact zone here, and no vibration and so on. So we must prevent it. How do we prevent an adhesion between the reconstructed undersurface and the promontory? By placing a very thin silicone there. Yes, sir. And so now, please, could you give me this or open it up? I will, I will do it myself, perhaps, better, uh, because I've only brought one with me. So, we open this up. It is, it is uh, not colored, because we don't want that any surgeon after this, afterwards, in the end, uh, less, less magnification, that he says, oh, what is blue? Why is it blue shining through the tympanic membrane? Uh, anatomical pins forceps, please. Anatomical forceps. Okay. Where's the anatomical forceps? Mm. Where is it? Ah, there it is. It's difficult to see. That's why I need the microscope. There. Can you see that? No. Yes, sir. But you can, can see, see that better here when I place it into the ear. Okay? Wait. <laughs> Suction and needle suction and needle oh no 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 this is much too small not a, not a small suction normal suction like I had before where is the suction where is the needle so no this is this, this is a needle this is no. Give me this angled thing which I had. This, I'm, uh, it's better. I need angled thing. So this is now the silicone. Do you see the form? It's yes. a crazy form. It's Pg4. quite complicated. Yes, Do you see that? Yes, sir. You can see. Now you can see. Yes, this sir. is for the hypotympanon. This is a notch for the over window for the stapes, and this runs into the tubal orifice. Okay. That means it's for left and right, just turning around. And then you place it here. So now you can be sure, or relatively sure, or at least there where the silicone sheeting is, there will be no adhesion. Like this. You see, and it fits. Yes, sir. It snug, fits snugly. That means there will be no adhesions in the hypotympanon. There will be no adhesions here around the stapes. And especially, most importantly, not underneath the promont on the promontory. Yes, sir. So the next step will be the prosthesis. So this is the first type of reconstruction, and now comes the prosthesis. I open. Will you open, or I better open it up myself? Give, give it to me. Where is the prosthesis? So, keep it lost. Prosthesis is important because sometimes it's statically. Uh, um, there are statically electricity on it, so we open it up and just put the finger on top, not to get rid, not to get loose, because sometimes it jumps away. So, and a dip of water, you have a piece of water, a piece of water, give me water. Normally we do this on the table, like this, water is always helpful, then it cannot jump away. And now a little forceps, a little, uh, yeah, this here. This was your, this was your knife, your, your scissor, no. So you bring it out, like this. This is the prosthesis. Take this. And you saw what it is? Give me again. Give me the package. So what is the length of the process? Sir? This is 0 0.2 thickness of the wire and 2.5 long. 2.5, that means from top of the stapes. In reality, it's only 1.5. This is, unfortunately, Kurtz has never made up its mind to, 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 to tell the correct length. 
This is only 1.5 functional length. Would you uh, do the fine adjustment, sir? Pardon? Would you do fine adjustment? I don't understand. Fine focus. Fine focus, yeah. I'm, I'm, Anand, not, I'm not yet. Anand. I'm still working on it. Sir. Ah, this field is now, very dark, Neeru. Anand. Uh, yes, sir. I'm also Neeru. telling it. Uh, we were just realizing it. Yeah. Uh, can I have the atmosphere, sir? This was not my needle. I, please give me the same Some instrument like before. I'm used to it now. Fine focusing, but it's very it's dark. It's not optimal, but I'm used to it. Yeah. Like this. Here is my. Here is the stapes. Then. Yes, sir. You see the stapes, and here we get rid again of all these blood clots, and we must left and right must be free, because these little feet will go into it, and then it has a little for the surgeon to help him. This little, you see, this little knot here, titanium. This shows backwards, and then you just put it on top of the stapes. Here it is. These two go left and right of the stapedius muscle and you just press it down gently and then it's stable. You see? Sir. Simple and easy. You saw that? Yes, sir. And it does not dislodge. Yes, sir. Very simple. And now what we can also do is here, you saw the incus eroded. We can place him here a little bit like this. It makes an additional stabilization and I luxate the, the, incre the, the malleable incre the joint was luxated by this maneuver, but it doesn't matter because it will, it will heal not very good functionally, but it will be stabilizing yes, and so we can keep it here. And now the next step is the perichondrium. Now, please. Just need to increase the light intensity. Why? What? The light intensity? Yes. No, 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 no. Yes, I, and it was nearly full. It was nearly full. Like this. So, needle. And please give me the, the material. So, again, we will pull through here, through the anterior tympanotomy here. There is three. And there, two. Here anteriorly. We must go very far anteriorly. Put before you insert it, take out the, all the blood clots, all the blood, so that it doesn't hamper. Here we are anteriorly. Okay, okay. Now, give me the perichondrium, please. Where's the perichondrium? <coughs> with, the, with the forceps, yes? With the forceps, not over the over the over the floor. Never over the floor. Only over the table. Yes. And pay attention to the cartilage. So now this is unfortunately like this. You see, this is the perichondrium. Sir. And we will place it a bit. Place it like this. There, this is anteriorly. They will be placed on the bony rim of the floor. Sir. And this must be pushed underneath the malleus. Sir. This is not good visibility. Yes, sir. We'll check. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that is not good. Where am I? There, there, there. And you just push it anteriorly until I can grab it through the posterior, to the anterior tympanotomy. Yes, sir. And this has to be placed on top over the prosthesis. This will be here in the end. Yes, sir. So, and now we look through the anterior tympanotomy. Where is it? There is the material. Yes, sir. Cautiously pulling it with a suction. Yes. Could you please close the door? That is a bit too loud. Yes, sir. Could you please close the door? It's too loud. Fine adjustment, sir. Fine. Okay. Here we pull through.
it's anterior uh, tympanotomy there. So that is fixed. There can nothing happen. Yes, sir. And now we'll check again at the lower part because with these manipulations sometimes it's, it's pulled out, pulled away or whatever it is. So again, this was the tympanic, this is the tympanic membrane. This is far anteriorly there, very far anteriorly. This is the floor, so we have a large, nice material, reconstructive material, and now we can even pull it, pull it onto, onto the floor of the external ear canal wall, on the bone. Onto the bone. There. There it is, resting on the bone. And now comes the interesting part. That means around here, this is the posterior rim, like this. And here we will place the cartilage in the afterwards. So this must be placed on top of the prosthesis because it goes underneath the malleus, underlay. So, and now the cartilage, please. And this is here, the perichon, the, the, the uh, silicone. silicone, you see? Yes, sir. There's no danger of adherence there. Yes, sir. So, cartilage, please. All the cartilage, please, into the ear. The advantage of this cartilage placement is that you can check, that you can look, all the cartilage, all the cartilage, please. All pieces of cartilage here, all pieces here. And now I can check, it's a little bit like a house builder, who has his logs and his wood and whatever it is. That is all? Yep. Okay. And now we can check how we can build it. That means we have a new... We have to build a new uh, posterior wall. Yes, sir. This is the... There is the malleus. So we try to find... To put this here. This has the right curve, it's curved. Sometimes it's bad when it's too much curving. But here perhaps it works fine. Perhaps we will check. Yes. Like this. Or not so good. We must play around a little bit. This is not yet optimal. Like this, which stands on the, f on the prosthesis. And you see the prosthesis makes it stable. Yes, sir. This can be placed here on top of the prosthesis again to have a stability there. So. Like this. And these parts here will reconstruct the posterior wall. Let me see if I can reconstruct. Yes, I can perhaps do it in this way that we just place it here underneath like this. Yes, this will be pressed. Ah. This will be pressed upwards like this here, resting on the bony rim. There's the bony rim. Yes, so we reconstruct the posterior wall from here. Like this. Here. This will be a reconstruction of the posterior wall here. This was the indentation where, we, where the fish, where the colder tympani went, came out. This is not good here. Sometimes we can cut it even with a needle. If it is pure cartilage, like here. Place this here. Now let's check. Now we pull back the skin. Should have done this earlier already because there's still too much blood, which makes, due to this clotting, makes it a bit difficult to see. Well, now we spread open the skin of the posterior wall. Sir. Like this. Do you have prepared the, the um, gel foam and so? Is that ready? Ready for application? Yep. This is the perichondria. The J-foam. Yep. Have you prepared it? Yep. Okay. So this is, now we have to check how it's holding. Ah, this needle. How it's holding. There is, what is this here? 
there is material which doesn't belong there. What is this? That is the skin of the posterior wall and this was the part of the retraction. So this must be placed here. This must be flipped over like this here. And this is the retraction. This was the retraction. And this here is the skin. And this is the skin. And here we look onto the perichondrium. You see that? Per the perforation is closed. And this is the skin. That visible? Not yet? You're not yet convinced? No? I have no positive answer. Yes, sir. But I'm convinced. It's, it's visible, sir. Here. There it is. This is skin, blood clot. Wait. Blood clot. Clean it. So this is the retracted skin. This has been the retracted skin. This is the retracted skin there. It's covering, it is lying on the bone, on the, on the, on the cartilage. And now what we do is, first of all, I want to stabilize it. I don't want to suck it away again. Please give me the, the silicones in the forceps, in the little uh, micro forceps. Yes, Take, give them. In the micro forceps. Is this a micro forceps? Where is the micro forceps? Open it up. No, no, you must do it over the table, never here. Always over the table. Otherwise, it's lying on the floor and that's it. No. You can take a scissor or something. Makes it easier. Now take away the... Take one and then you give me the others. Okay. This is number one. And we bring it in here like this. You see, this will guide the healing process, the epithelialization. Hello. Next one. Excuse me, sir. Pan. Where is it? Sir. I need, no, no, I need it with the forceps. Where is the... F Again, I didn't understand your question. Please. Sir, the silicon sheet uh, kept in the middle ear, is it permanent or to be removed in the future, sir? I didn't understand. Please question give me the next one. I didn't understand what you asked. I didn't got it. In the middle ear? Uh, excuse me, sir. There is a question from the delegate. Yes, please. He yes. wants to know whether the silicon sheet you have kept on. Yes. The when silicone sheet on the promontory. Next one. Yeah. This is, of course, a question which you can ask. The first thing is there we have a lifelong experience with good silicone, medical silicone, not the bad one, the good one, which is used for other purposes, for example, by ladies, which have big silicone implants, also for lifelong in other parts of the body. Okay, sir. First yes. of all. Second is, you don't ask this for the titanium prosthesis. Another the titanium that. prosthesis is also lifelong. So this is, and until now, the, we have experience with silicone since the 1960s. I'm not the first one to use them. They have been used a long time already. And uh, we have a good experience. I did revision surgery 20 years after placement of a needle, after placement of a prosthesis, yeah, of a silicone. And the what? silicone was stable in the ear, healthy mucosa on top, and nothing happened. So silicone was very well tolerated in cases where there is no infection, where there is no problem. So what I want to do now again is to show you, to check, is it really correct what we did? Okay. Lifting it up, sucking an... out the blood, and there is the silicone. You see? Yes, sir. You see the tympanic cavity? Okay. Tympanic cavity with a good aeration, with good silicone there. That means there is no blood. Putting this back, reconstruction back for the posterior wall, this back, and the last thing is again checking that it does not dislodge. Where is my anterior tympanotomy? Okay. There, yes, sir. and there is the parishion room. You see? Oh, yes, it is sir. not dislodged. Yes, sir. And now with this silicone here, we press it. Here is pressing. 
So this will not, this is like, I told you, like in a sailing ship, this, the sail, the, the, the rope, now j -form. the rope which will hold the sail, the sail is the perichondrium, in place. j -form? Oh, no, 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 it must be soaked. Another question. This is dry, this is not what? wood. What is it the... It must be soaked, it must be soaked, isn't this so? Where do you have antibiotic solution? Where do you put it in? Antibiotics, not water. No, 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 you need antibiotics. If you put it like this, then it is no good. That will be to start to stink and to have infected in, in a few days. You need antibiotics. Tetracycline, you have tetracycline, you have uh, some... Uh, what do you have from? Rosephine or... Um, or, or um, Floxal or something. Some antibiotic solution. I should have considered this earlier. So the ointment there now has to be uh, with antibiotics because if you just pu put water, the, there's of course a lot of infection in the ear canal, then this water and the gel foam will be the best agar agar in, in body warm surroundings. So this, uh, this uh, ointment will start to stink after a few days. They will be infected and that will destroy the complete reconstruction. What is that? What is that? Pardon? Cephafloxin? Zip, zip, what? Cephafloxin? There is an another question, sir. Antibiotics. What antibiotics? Ciprofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin, okay. Alignment. But this should be done earlier already, huh? That's the problem now. It must be soaked in it. So, wait a moment, give me, the, give me this. And you take two or three of them. Now I pull this out again, this is no good. And give me the, the other part. Show it, give it on a needle or, yes, not, not pressing, on a needle is better. So that we have enough antibiotic solution. We don't want to get it away. So this is, and a needle for me please, and a needle for me. So you just put this in. You see, antibiotic solution, go on, go on. And now you can leave this ointment for three weeks without bothering. There will be no infection, or nearly never, 90%. Ah. And then, after three weeks, when you take this out, you will see underneath the silicone, you will see a wonderful healing of this perforation. And normally, mostly, most of the cases, this perichondrium, thank you, that's enough. This perichondrium is intact, healthy, and that's good. So why, what do we do here now is, of course, trying to, to put this silicone over the incision. We made an incision in the posterior wall, and we want that this incision is covered by the silicone. So when we loosen our retractor here, take this, please. When we lose our retractor, Sir, one more question. In forceps, forceps, anatomical forceps. What we want is that this is the ear canal. Here you see the blue. Can you yes. see that? Ah, yes, sir. So we want that this. Where is the skin? Where did I? This was the insect. Another forceps. Hold this finger and another forceps. And this is the skin incision. There. Yes. Is that visible? There was the skin. Ah, clean, cleaning, clean, 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 clean. So this was this, no, clean. Here's the skin canal, this is the skin where we had incision. And this has to be placed there. And so here, there we will do, this is the skin, and this is our incision line. So this must be placed here, you see? Yes, sir. Okay. This is a piece of cartilage we can leave. And now we do suturing. Which one do you want, sir? Suture, resolvable suture, 2.030. Or and then for the rest, do you have a monofill? And we do a suturing in the ear, in the posterior canal. You have monofill in the for the skin suture. Do you have monofill suturing? Monofill, sir. Monofill. You have monofill 3.30. Give me. This is what? What is this? Where is this? Where is it? Where, do, where did you put it? Where is it? Ah. Where is it? 
three zero vicryl. That is good, vicryl. And I need three zero monophyl, non-resorbable. Okay, so now we can suture, and now you see the advantage of this little uh, incision. Also, we suture the this flap. So, do we have to focus a bit, sir? Yes, we perhaps better do it in macroscopical, because that is better to do oh, without. You have microscope. You make light. No, no, no. Leave it there. Leave it the light. Mm. Yes, I always want the light. And more light. There, you have more light in the operation. Where is the light? Yes, thank you. Here and there. Sir. Why is it important? We, with this a good suture here, will prevent an ear canal stenosis, which can always happen if you don't do a good suture. So, like this, pulling it back, <laughs> pull the ear canal skin backwards. Three is normal, I always do four because the older I am, the more I'm, uh, I don't believe in the safety. I want to have one safety, not more. One, two, three, four. And upstairs also here. Temporal muscle towards the perion perion periosteum there. And now it is closed. This has not much function there. It's enough, three. Sure. And then, where is our indentation? There you see the little mark which I placed. Like this. And the other part is there. And you see the skin is fine. There is no indentation mark of any <coughs> retraction, retractor, uh, yes. ischemia or something. That will be a good healing. So, yes. no, 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 leave it. So now we can do the skin suture. And then afterwards, we'll have to look into the ear canal to flip back the silicones, to really to position the silicones in the correct way here. And now the skin suture. Excuse me, sir. <coughs> in former times, when I hold it, hold it, hold it. In former sir. times, uh, this could be done by the young doctors, but now, with this new technique of the silicones wrapping and so on, I have to do it myself because this is the best precaution against the ear canal stenosis. Cut yes. here. I think there's a question for you, Cut sir. Here. Yes, please do. Cut, please. So say. What is the thickness of uh, silicone sheets uh, you kept in the extrontimeters? The silicone sheeting where? Kept in the extrontimeters. What is the thickness of the this, silicone sheet? This is the same. 0 0.13. It is nearly like the tympanic membrane. Zero, tympanic membrane is 100 micrometers and the silicone is 100 micrometers. 100, 130. Yes, sir. So, uh, nearly the same. So, very thin, very fine. What is the so price of the each unit, Oof. sir? Oh, you ask me rupees? I don't know. Sir. You must ask the distributor. That depends from country to country. Perhaps I could imagine that in Germany it's more expensive than in your country. Yes, sir. You must ask the dealer. Uh, there are different, dis different producers. By the way, this blue color that sir. was invented, I was a young doctor in my clinic in Münster because sir. we had to take out these silicone sheetings and radical cavities. We sometimes put in five or six of them. Yes, and sir. if they are not colored, it's difficult to see them. So uh, the young colleague of mine, he put it into a, um, a box of methylene blue, you know, the, the dye, Sir. the color, Sir. and it, they turned blue, Sir. and then they remained blue. It was fantastic, and that was the solution. And then afterwards, oh, well, the companies took over. They are also existing in, in yellow, I think, or in, in brown, I don't know, but, but, but blue is the most used time. So, now, cut, cut. Okay, thank you. And now, stop, we are not yet ready. Give me a, a piece of cloth. What do we have to do? We have to guarantee a good healing. That means always put the wound, make the wound in this way. Please that focus, please the focus. pieces of the, that the skin is getting not overlapping. 
that the skin is not overlapping but just going one just against each other. This is good surgical, general surgical technique. So now, the posterior thing is open, you can leave this in one week. This is no problem. You can get it, you can cut it. And now we good. We have to go into the ear canal again. The ear canal is where? Where is the ear canal? There, suction. And now the speculum again. Do you have a nose speculum, Noah? You have a nose speculum? For a nose? Yes, nose speculum. No speculum. Do you have that? That with this you can open the ear canal easier and here you see the silicones already. Fortunately this young girl has a very large ear canal so that will make it easier for her to have a good good drainage and a good aeration of this tympanic cleft, uh, the, the tympanic membrane. So here this is always bare bone. There's always bare bone. And here, here you see the silicones. The silicones there. And now, what do we put in the external ear canal? Do we have something which you want to put there? What do you place here in the external ear canal? <coughs> what do you have? Well, you have to place something here. What do you put here? Yes, sir. What do you put? So, mirror cell. I have one. This is silvery, the lower part, the very low. No, this is not for me, Medtronic. No, 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 it's there. No, 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 no. This is the, the lower part. Yes. If you open that up, and you, you take this antibiotic solution, the rest in the syringe here. Yes, sir. Could you put it into a syringe? Yes, sir. And then we will fill it up. You know this, huh? You just use always the same, always the same, always the same procedure. This is when I saw it. It was very expensive, but now there are cheaper ones. I don't know. There's so one, one part is expensive. Show? Scissor, cut it open. Expandable uh, poly. Cut. Alcohol. Oh, cut again. Cut again. Special. This is okay. Ear back. There it is. Where? Here, here it is. Here it comes. There. Cut it in half. You only need half of it. Because the rest is filled. The rest is already filled with the gel foam. And now, give me on the forceps. Excuse me, sir. And put it there. Where is it? Yes, sir. leave it. I think. Yes, please. So, what is that you are putting inside? And sir? now antibiotics. Pardon? What is that you are inserting into the meatus? I don't understand. What is it you are inserting? This, what, what is putting in? This, uh, this is marrow cell or what is this? No, marrow cell. Yes, sir. Thank you. Please give me the antibiotics. Where is the antibiotic? And this antibiotics makes it grow so. thick. And the advantage is in former times we pressed an ointment into the ear. And yes. what was this? That was especially for young doctors. And now a little, no, uh, this one is this, what is this? Cotton wool. Yes, cotton wool. Um, in former times it was just pressing inside. That means the flaps were, to, were pressed inside. If you didn't pay attention, it was a young doctor. And then you open it up after three weeks, you had a near canal stenosis. With this is easy. You put it in and just expands like this. Cotton is important now. Not here is here is not so very important, but it is good because if we have if we take out the complete cartilage, here you see in the post, in the concha there is nothing. There is no defect, nothing to see. So but this presses it down a little bit to prevent a hematoma when you do a, an, an, uh, an ointment. Perfect. Now this is fat, ready. Now you can just wrap Bukun, it around. One plus two, please. One plus two. Pardon? No, sir. That's the auditorium. Normal ear canal. Sir, Normal will ear you remove the medicinal pack, sir? When do you remove the pack? Can you remove the pack? pack? The pack. The pack. This is done in three weeks. 
because it's antibiotic solution. Three weeks can stay like this, and after three weeks you pull it out, put out the three blue silicones, and then you have a wonderful ear canal and good hope also or starting epithelialization of the perichondrium so underneath the silicone. And then you don't need long, in this case, for example, I expect no more ointment. You just look, it's a bit raw, but you don't need eardrops, nothing. Just leave it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mukund will go with one only. Only one. Thank you, doctor.